Really? Is this fast? Or is it fiction? We needed to find out. Hi everybody, Jim from Herald Sports here. Thanks so much for taking the time to click on this video and uh, giving us a few minutes as we go over this. So now, over the past year or so, you've seen professional triathletes more and more place a bottle down the front of their jersey or their kit. Uh, Gustav Eden did it uh, when he won Kona. Magnus Ditlef is putting something down his kit. We don't know what it is, but all are claiming that it's more aerodynamic. Well, we needed to find out if that was actually true. So in true aero fashion, we gathered up a bunch of our athletes and decided to test. Now, we tested primarily two bottles, although we tested some other things as well. Uh, we tested a 28 ounce, just standard water bottle. And then we tested a 1.5 liter bottle of Crystal Geyser uh, from the grocery store, you know, 99 cents. And we decided to see if we could find any kind of aero gains from doing this. And if so, how much? And if so, is it consistent amongst athletes? Well, here come the results. Now we tested nine athletes in total, five men and five women. And I don't want this to be a 20 or 30 minute video, so we're not covering every single one of them. Uh, we're gonna put all the data on our website and there's a link below for that. So if you wanna look at all the data from all the athletes, uh, feel free. We're gonna focus on four athletes, two men and two women. Um, one for their similarities, but also for their differences. So first up, let's look at Tony. Uh, you may recognize Tony from some of our other videos and our Instagram posts. He is an excellent aero tester for us. Uh, he's just a metronome, and so he gives us really, really good, consistent numbers. So we started with the 28-ounce bottle, and for Tony, that did offer up a drag savings. That drag savings was 2.31% which for him at race pace equals right at six watts. Um, that's pretty darn impressive actually uh, for a 28 ounce bottle right off the bat. We found a drag savings and we were excited. Then we tried the 1.5 liter bottle on him and this one we did a little different on Tony. Uh, we did it both low and high. Let's look at the high number. Uh, that yielded a 6.02% drop in drag, so uh, quite a bit more than the 28 ounce bottle. And for him at race pace, that equaled 15.6 watts. Now, interestingly, he also then moved that bottle very low, and that number was far worse uh, at only 1.2 watts of savings. So we lost almost all the savings by moving it lower. Um, we'll cover some anomalies later, but I thought that was kind of fascinating. But for Tony, um, both bottles yielded a savings, but that 1.5 liter bottle was uh, more than significant. Our next athlete was Megan. Uh, Megan is a, uh, a very competitive age group triathlete. Um, and for her, once again, we started with the 28 ounce bottle. And for her, that offered a 2.31% drop in drag. Wait a minute. That kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? That's right. It's the exact same drop and drag that Tony saw, 2.31%, which was really astonishing to us. Um, this was done on separate days, by the way. Um, now, what's interesting is for her, that yielded a savings of 3.9 watts. And it's a good example to me of why we need to stop talking about watts. Watts are sexy, they're fun to talk about, but they're really just dependent on the watts that you put out as your race pace, right? So for, for Megan's race pace, she was able to get a 3.9 watt savings, where for Tony, Tony's savings were more because he puts out more power. So even though they have the same percentage of drag savings, Tony's was equal to more wattage than Megan's. Both of them though found a 2.31% improvement and that's really how we should talk about drag savings and you're going to see us do that a lot here on this channel we want to move away from watts and into percentage of drag savings then we put the 1.5 liter bottle on megan and uh even a better drop in drag 5.56 percent this time 
which was for Megan about 9.4 watts. And again, very similar to Tony, only about a half a percent different than the savings Tony found. So that was really impressive. And when you look at them both, you can see they both actually have very similar builds as far as they're pretty long. They have a lot of reach in their position. Uh, their back angles are very similar. So it's not uh, surprising that they uh, found similar results. Very, very impressive for both of them and very impressive results for these two bottles. More than significant savings. Now let's move on to Christy. Christy is interesting because she is small in stature, but man, she's a powerhouse on the bike. So again, starting with the 28 ounce bottle, we saw 3.19% improvement in drag. So a little more than Tony and Megan. Um, and for her, because of the power she puts out, that was a 5.7 watt advantage or a 5.7 watt drop in drag. So yeah, 3.19%, that is a significant drop in drag for putting a bottle down the front of your kit. But here's where it gets interesting. Then we tried the 1.5 liter bottle on her and it wasn't as good. There we saw 1.59% drop in drag. So yes, it, it dropped her drag, but by uh, quite a bit less, um, basically half. And now we have a 2.9 watt savings in drag. So still a, a savings, but significantly less. And and she even said the bottle felt too big for her. Uh, she was even kicking it a little bit. And so for her small stature, that 1.5 liter bottle just was too big. It wasn't comfortable, um, really not usable for her. So for her, the 28 ounce bottle was better. Or perhaps we could find a shorter version of the 1.5 liter diameter, and then she might see a more significant drop in drag. That's something we may try in the future. Uh, but that was she wasn't the only one who experienced that. That's why we included her in, in these results on the video, because we thought that was fascinating. It's also fascinating because of our next rider, who is Adam. And we included Adam for a few different reasons. First of all, his position. It's not typical of what you see from aero sports. Uh, most of our athletes are very elongated. They have a lot of reach. Their back angles are very low and they're very comfortable in those positions and they're very aero in those positions. Adam sits upright a little more. His reach is shorter. It's different. It works for him. If you've ever raced against him, you know it works for him, but it is different. And we thought it important to include someone who doesn't have the typical aero sports position. Let's take a look at his results because they might indicate something even more interesting to us. First of all, the 28 ounce bottle. For him, a 4.7% drop in drag. That's the biggest of the four, right? 4.7%, that is a very significant drop in drag with the 28 ounce bottle. For him and his power output at race pace, that yields 11.8 watts. Massive savings, right? But we're not done. Then we place the 1.5 liter bottle down his kit and watch out, 8.55% drop in drag, just a massive drop in drag. For him at his race pace, that is 21.4 watts. That is ridiculous. Uh, so ridiculous that it's was sort of hard to believe for me. But we had other athletes also get these numbers. Uh, Jeff saw it almost 19 watts. David saw 24 and a half watts from the 1.5 liter bottle. You notice everybody else did very well with that 1.5 liter bottle as long as it wasn't too big for them. It also is interesting that the athletes that were sitting up a little higher did seem to see better gains. Now, I don't think we looked at this close enough to really come to any conclusions, but it would sort of make sense that that would happen. So maybe something we need to look into for the future, but fascinating nonetheless. Okay, a few more things and let's wrap this up. Uh, we did have a little more fun with Tony and uh, that we tested a couple of other things. The first was a three liter camelback bladder, not the, not the full pack, just the bladder down his kit. And that ended up being a 4.17% drop in drag. Um, hopefully I've got that up on the video right now or 10.8 watts for him at his race pace. So 4.17, so kind of in between the 28 ounce bottle and the 1.5 liter bottle. But then, uh, first he, he did complain, it felt like it was sloshing around a little bit, it wasn't as comfortable uh, as the other bottles were. 
So then just for fun, we tried that three liter pack with the 28 ounce bottle in front of it. So we, we stacked them basically. And that yielded um, an 8.8% drop in drag, which equaled the 22.9 watts for Tony. So the combination of the two, which let's face it, you really wouldn't do, but it was just fun and it worked. It worked really well. But So the bladder worked. It just didn't work quite as well as the 1.5 liter bottle and he didn't think it was comfortable. But that was a 3 liter bladder, so maybe a 2 liter bladder. Um, well, maybe not quite as aero because it just isn't going to push that jersey out far enough uh, would do the trick. So what did we learn from all this? Well, clearly we learned that putting a bottle down the front of your kit works for virtually everybody. Um, it does make you more aerodynamic. Lo and behold, other people have tested, uh, found it to be true, and so did we. Um, you can put too big of a bottle down the front if it's uh, too big for your personal size, but it looked like everybody was pretty safe putting a 28-ounce bottle down the front of their kit. Uh, so pretty fascinating because in the end, uh, with, the, with the numbers we were seeing and the aerodynamic uh, gains we saw, hey, it could be one of the best deals in all of triathlon for uh, gaining some speed. Now... Outside of this testing, I did have one client test very poorly with a bottle down the front of his kit. It didn't matter if it was the 28 ounce or the 1.5 liter. However, it answers a question for us. You'll notice, and I'll show it to you now, that most of the bottles did pull the front of the kit down. It did create an opening between the top of the chest, bottom of the neck, and the kit itself. And you would think that would have caused drag, but it didn't until it did. Um, I had a client who had a kit, I'm not going to name the name of the kit, that was, it was, it was pretty low neckline. And when we put the bottle down that kit, the entire kit was pulled down and that just ended up being a big old parachute and it was horrible for him. So clothing designers, you need a higher neck for this. This is a thing. You might as well start designing for it. Uh, so there you go. That's the, that's going to wrap up our, our, uh, chest bottle or belly bottle or whatever you want to call it test. Uh, it was certainly fascinating. It was certainly fun. Um, there's a link down to our website for, for all the data. Again, I can't believe I'm saying this because uh, it just sounds so cliche, but please like this video if you enjoyed this content. Uh, subscribe to the channel. If you're still here, I don't know why you're still here, but hey, have at it. Uh, the more people we get to subscribe, the more um, the broader audience that we can get the more it's going to encourage us to do these videos. Up next, in the next few weeks, we will be doing arrow socks and calf sleeves. We have arrow socks and calf sleeves. Um, that's going to be an interesting test. Probably going to be an unhappy manufacturer or two with the results. We'll see you then.